few years ago, I was gifted this NanoSkin Micro Buff High Speed Orbital Polisher. No idea if this thing actually works. The problem is the power cable right here has been cut. I was just rummaging around in the garage today, came across it, so I decided to go to Home Depot, buy a $13 replacement cable, break this thing down, replace the power supply, test it out, make sure that it works, so that hopefully I can flip it on eBay for some great profit. Stick around, watch this video, I'll show you how I do it. ATL Resell Guy. All right, we've got our NanoSkin Micro Buff device laid out on the table here. There's six total screws that are holding this plate in, so we'll remove those with the Phillips head screwdriver. Four of these are short, the ones in the handle, and there's two longer ones that are inlaid into the middle of the device here, and they were just so inset that I had to turn it over in order to get them out. There's our four small screws, and we've also got the two longer screws. So wanna be sure we put those back in the right spots or it's not going to clamp down right. Had to jiggle it a little bit to get the handle off, but no problem once it was. And there's these two Phillips head screws that are holding the cable inside the handle there. Just in case there's any pulls on it, looks like that keeps it from ripping out of the connector piece on the inside. So there you see the two Phillips heads and the bridge that kind of clamps down on the power supply cable. We've got this relay right here with two more tiny little Phillips head screws. So go ahead and remove those. And each of these has a small little nut on the bottom of it. So got to be sure to keep that. You see one fell down on the handle right there. took some scissors and decided to just go ahead and cut these old wires here and take the wire strippers and just re-strip them, get some fresh copper underneath. Pull them apart here, I used the 14 gauge setting on the wire strippers and that seemed to work out pretty good. And from here, just pull these apart, take the replacement power supply, which already had the ends pre-stripped, which was very convenient. And I decided just to twist these together and tie them down with electrical tape. I was considering taking everything apart and recrimping the metal connectors that I just unscrewed from the relay, but I decided this was just a quicker and easier way for me. So here's the electrical tape. Just making sure that I completely cover the metal inside the wires here. Make sure they're nice and tight. And I took one more piece of electrical tape and just went ahead and taped them both together once everything was secure. And that'll just hold it all together really nice. This part's important. You don't want any metal touching or bridging. So take your time with it. Make sure that you cover everything up. Make sure that it's tight and uh, you'll be good. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect these to the relay with the trigger. It can only go in on one side. So just slide that into the saddle right there. And screw back in the tiny, tiny little Phillips head screws, making sure not to lose those little square nuts that were underneath that, or it'll have nothing to screw into and also making sure you reinstall it in the same configuration, the black being on top and the white being on the bottom. Had to depress the button on the relay just to make it sit back down underneath the trigger and went ahead and tested it just to be sure it was initiating, and it was. So here's where I had to improvise a little bit. I had a lot of slack left over, so what I did was end up just folding it down into the handle so that the power supply was sitting flush right there underneath that bridge. And I wanted that bridge to be nice and tight so that if there was any tugs or pulls on the power supply, it wouldn't be pulling out any connectors.
And I went back and forth tightening these. I didn't want to tighten one side all the way down. So just went back and forth and made sure everything was even and snug. Tested the trigger, make sure that it's working and it looks good. Time to put the shell back on here. Wanted to press it down and squeeze it and just get it as tight as possible before putting in any screws. This area in the middle seemed to be the side that wanted to pop up the most. So I went ahead and tightened that down first with the long screws. Then came back to the handle here, put the short screws in and went ahead and tightened these down. Once that's done, we can test it out and see if it works. Got the power supply here. Go ahead and plug in the replacement power cable that we just changed out and give it a whirl. Wanted to look at it and just check all the seams, make sure everything was tight and snug, held together by those screws and it looks pretty good. And it's working great. Replacement power supply is perfect. It's on the high setting, so I went ahead and turned the wheel all the way to the low setting here. Looks good, so split the difference and go to the middle setting. And then from there, I just wanted to change the speeds while it was still initiated and powered on. And it can uh, be changed on the fly like that. Everything's working great. All right, got this buffer all fixed up. It's looking very, very OEM as far as the uh, replacement cable in here. Spent about 30 minutes fixing it, so not too bad in terms of time, and used a couple simple tools that everybody usually has sitting around the house. The Phillips head screwdriver just to take this plate off and to uh, disconnect the existing cables some scissors, some wire cutters, and some wire strippers with a little bit of electrical tape. No big deal at all. Like I said, I got this thing for free. It looks like it sells on their website for $325 new in the box. Now mine may be missing one pad here, and it's also missing the little handle that goes right there. But I'm guessing in this condition, it's worth about $100, $150 or so. So if I can get a hundred bucks for it and only spent $13 and 30 minutes fixing it up, that's a great deal for me. If you guys are enjoying this, this kind of content make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel because I'm finding that these types of videos are doing well for me so I'm gonna keep making content like this until next time guys ATL resale guys signing out thanks for watching until the end of the video if you haven't already check above to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and if you'd like to enjoy more content like this hit the links below to other videos